All right, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Dank Material Shell. You can actually install this on Arch, Fedora. I installed it on my NixOS system here. I installed it as a module so I can switch back and forth from this and back to my Waybar. I just went through the process of getting it all installed. It actually took me quite a bit <laughs> to get it installed because I went through the regular installation because I didn't want the full dot files and everything. I'm using my own dot files. I didn't want to change everything else that I had on my system. I just wanted the bar itself with Quick Shell. So I went through the installation method with the Dank Shell installation and I did the home manager route um, on my NixOS system to get everything installed. It took me quite a bit, ran into a lot of errors, but I used my good old buddy Claude to help me out and fix those. And so I got everything up and running. So I kind of just want to share the experience on um, my first impressions because I have not been through everything. All I've done is changed my wallpaper and updated the colors. <laughs> I'm going to run through uh, everything it has to offer. If you install the full dot files, you'll get the keyboard shortcuts and everything else that comes with their setup. Uh, here is the bar at the top. This is, you know, done with, with Quick Show. And... It's actually pretty nice because it has all of these built-in settings within it. I'll start on this side. You do have a application launcher. So you can type in and launch a specific application from here, which is nice. And then it has your current running app over here. In the middle, you have kind of like an overview section here with your, like the time, the date. If any media is playing, it shows me I'm done. It has the NixOS logo. I like that touch and that's on Hyperland. And then we can show your media here, the weather. I believe you can update this to make sure it's, you know, where you're at and if you want Fahrenheit or Celsius there. And then also your settings here, which I'll go to that here in a second. But here's your tray as well. You have your clipboard there. And then you also have uh, your notifications and how you're connected. That's power management, which I actually would not need because I'm on a desktop. So I probably won't be using that power management tool. You also have your quick settings and stuff with your settings guide. You can edit these and move them around, which is a pretty cool option. All right, now I messed them all up. So I'm going to have to reorder those to get them back to where I wanted. So let's jump into the settings and see what we have to offer here. So I already changed my wallpaper. It's actually pretty nice. It actually opens like a little window here and then you can find your wallpaper. So I actually, you know, went into my Blackdown OS found my wallpapers folder and now it defaults to this folder every time I open it. I can just select a new wallpaper and it changes the theme in the background. And then you can also apply it with dynamic theming. So you can add like different theme options and it does it based on your wallpaper. This one has very similar colors as the previous one. That's why nothing has really changed there. But you also can do wallpaper cycling and different wallpapers per monitor. This is really cool that all of this is included. It makes it feel like more of a desktop than just a window manager. And with all of these settings, you can change the fonts, um, the animation speeds. You can actually enable the, the lock screen. I'm not sure if this will show up on screen here. Let me check. There was a lock screen option. Hold on. Oh, this one here. And then I can sign back in. So I'm not sure if that actually displayed on my... OBS there because it actually covered it up, but nevertheless, you do have a lock screen that's automatically enabled on here for you. And then we can go to time and date. You can change 24 hour format and the format that you want on the bar itself. So this is really nice. You don't have to go into any configuration or change anything. It's all in this little GUI here. And then here's the weather. So like I have Fahrenheit, you can choose your location based on your IP address, which is Pretty cool touch. Not a lot of different configurations have auto location. You normally have to input that kind of stuff yourself. So then you have the dank bar. So you can actually move the bar from top, bottom, left, and right. And it's instant. That's pretty nice. I like how quickly we can do that. You have auto hide, manual hide, on and off. You can change the spacing. This is actually really involved. You can do square corners instead of rounder corners, goth corners, a curved swooping, Oh, okay. I know which one that is. I actually didn't know it was called that. You can change the border and then you can also change what is in which section. Here, this is where I can remove the battery level under the power management. That's the one I didn't need. It instantly removes, which is really nice. There's no reload. Everything happens instantly. Then we go to widgets. So you have your workspace settings, workspace padding, per monitor workspaces. So that's if you want it to do per monitor or all workspaces to show on there. That's just a preference thing. I think I like it. 
per monitor. I'll test it out and see. <laughs> then you have the media player settings. If you want the wave progression and the running app settings, running apps only in a current workspace. So it only shows the running apps in the current, you know, workspace. And there's also a dock actually does not know. Oh, interesting. So you actually get a dock as well, which is a pretty cool touch. Not, not many of these have a dock built in there. That's pretty nice. And then we have displays showing all the connected displays. It shows the dank bar. And then it, you can, these are just toggling off on and off all the different things that you have display wise. And then the launcher, that's what it's showing up here. So you can have an apps icon, OS logo, Hyperland logo, or a custom. You can choose the file that you want to be up there. I'll probably go with OS logo. I think that's a, a nice touch to always have up there. Color override is default primary, which is the primary color from the wallpaper selected, or you can do custom. So I'll do primary so it matches with the theme that's going on there. Then you go with themes and colors, which takes you back to where I was changing the, the personalization for the wallpaper. So this is very similar section there. Below will modify your GTK and QT settings. Just saying back them up before you change these things because it will, you know, change that. It's actually applying to your system, which is pretty interesting that this is kind of baked in, even though I'm not using, you know, their actual dot files. Um, uh, I'm assuming like if you're using the dot files, it's even more cohesive and everything's working. So that's a pretty nice touch. And then you have the power section. This is for idle. Okay, I see that. That's if you wanted to, when you wanted to suspend and turn off monitors and all that stuff. It looks like it's all set for never. But I have my own hyper idle enabled. I don't know if that's going to overwrite that or if this is going to overwrite the other one. I'll do some testing and see. And then you have a plugin section, which I'm not 100% sure what this section is for. I have not messed with any of the plugins or even set it up. As you can see, a DMS plugin manager is unavailable right now. So there's another setting that I need to enable. I'm sure this is already enabled if you download the dot files themselves. So you wouldn't have any issues there. That's all of the settings. And then you have the about. You got your nice little dank logo up there. But yeah, so this is this is really nice. I like everything they have set up here. The fact that it's all within these settings easily changed and it's like like instant that everything changes. I really like that. So I'm going to keep messing around with this, maybe customize it a little bit more. I will keep you guys updated with the progress of my dot files. If you have been enjoying my content, please consider liking and subscribing. Give me some suggestions and anything you want me to review or check out, and I will do so in another video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.